the mere rogues? <laughs> I wish you'd know me. The bigger the graveyard, the more powerful we become. Cue the intro. Welcome back to the channel today guys. Thank you so much for clicking on my video as always. Today's video we have an Abzan reanimator deck. Like I said in the intro, the more cards in our graveyard, the more powerful we become. And that is so true because we run Eerie Ultimatum as our big top end win con in this deck today. Uh, before we talk about the deck though and get into the gameplay footage, which is pretty sweet by the way. Um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I just ask that you do do so quickly. Just go ahead and hit that red button. Um, it's going to go ahead and notify you whenever we go live or post any sort of videos on the channel. Uh, so be sure to do that so you don't miss out on any future content. Also, in the links in the description below, there are some links to uh, the Twitch channel when we go live um, and some of the social medias down below as well. Um, I actually ask that you maybe join the Discord. It's a really cool place where we kind of share ideas and talk about different decks. So hope to see you there one day. Um, but let's talk about the deck a little bit here. So today's deck runs Yorion as our companion. So I started off by building this deck, like I said, around Eerie Ultimatum, and I thought to myself, what would be great for this card? And I started throwing in a bunch of cards. Next thing you know, I had 90 something cards in the deck that I thought were fantastic. Then I had to start trimming down. I couldn't trim down past 80, so I decided, you know what? Yorion it is. Yorion's gonna be our companion. It doesn't synergize amazingly with the deck. It's not like the main synergistic card of the deck. Um, it just kind of, there are some things in the deck that it can hit that could be really good. It's more so just an extra card because I really wanted to run to 80 cards. Plus if we're trying to reanimate, um, there's so much mill out there right now that we're gonna actually end up milling ourselves if we're not careful. So we're trying to get things to the graveyard and we need 80 cards so that way we don't have to ever be concerned about oh no we're getting really close to being milled here so here is the deck so first off three giant killers this is our one drop uh, can come down as a creature for one two um, and tap some things or you can destroy a uh, target creature with power four or greater uh, we threw this in basically because it's a permanent and it's a removal card. So basically all the removal cards in our deck, anything that we want to get uh, creatures off the battlefield with, um, aside from our Shadow of the Sky, uh, they're all permanents. And the reason being is because we can return any number of permanent cards with different names from the graveyard to the battlefield. So if ever we use this card up, it, it dies, it goes to the graveyard, it's reoccurring. We can actually pull it back from the graveyard. Up next is Charming Prince. We have four Charming Princes. This is going to be a really good Scry 2, Gain 3 Life, or Exile. Uh, the reason we have uh, Charming Prince in here is because it's a really good way to just kind of mana fix, uh, you know, check down and, and Scry, or even keep us alive in a lot of cases. This is a really good card to keep us alive, and it's one of the few cards that synergize with Yorian, so it makes a lot of sense to have a Charming Prince in here. Uh, Myers Triton, another really great card for the deck because it... Uh, throws a bunch of cards into our graveyard uh, for us to eventually bring back with our eerie ultimatum and it also has death touch so it's hard for our opponents to get any attacks through and it's a really good defense uh, creature uh, if they don't have any removal for it up next we have three binding of the titans a really great saga card that doesn't get a lot of play just because it's kind of very unique uh that, that it mills you and your opponent but what's great about this is if you can get it down turn two if you have a two land hand you now basically have a pretty strong possibility of pulling back another land from the graveyard um, so it's also a really great mana fixing tool you gain life off this card so gaining life is going to be pretty key in this deck uh, you want to try to stay alive as long as possible so you can get down that ultimatum up next we have four Skyclave Apparitions, a very sweet control card that synergizes well with Yorian. And uh, if we end up losing it, we can pull this back from the graveyard as well. So more permanents that just kind of, the, the key of the deck guys, permanents that remove things from our opponent's side of the battlefield. That's it. You want to keep clearing out our opponent's battlefield and eventually we're going to get everything that we played already. We're going to get it back from the graveyard in one big swoop and end the game. So. That's the idea. Uh, up next, Elspeth Nightmare, another Saga card. Um, saga cards are really good here because not only do they do a lot of different things, uh, they eventually run out and uh, go to the graveyard uh, over time so they can be replayed. Um, up next is Treacherous Blessing. This is a really great way just to keep our hand refilled and keep us going. But of course, if you have Treacherous Blessing, you have to run for Doom Foretolds. Another great way for us to not only remove our own things from the field, but continuously remove things from our opponent's side of the field. Uh, keeps the synergies rolling. 
Then we have three Timurit Calls the Dead, because if we're going to be playing from the graveyard, why not gain more life, scry more, all those fun things, and keep creating tutus. If we're going to have a full graveyard, might as well exile some things. Uh, anything that has, you know, doubles, you can't actually return things with the same name, so uh, you can actually start, you know, getting rid of some double cards in the graveyard and creating zombies for them, so a lot of value there. And then we have uh, the Awakening. This card is pretty sweet because it can reoccur from the graveyard as well. Kind of a backup to our Eerie Ultimatum. The only downside is it can only bring back creatures. So something to think about. Sh uh, Shadow of the Sky is really good for our aggro matchups. You'll see we went against a mono red or mono white deck. And we were able to Shadow of the Sky and basically take control of the game. So uh, Shadow of the Sky, very, very good here. You could also run Extinction Event in the slot as well. Um, totally up to you. But I like Shadow of the Sky here just because it kind of takes out the entire battlefield if need be if we lose our skyclave apparition they're going to get some tokens back so you want to be able to shatter the sky um, so that's there for that reason up next we have liliana walker of the dead so our waker of the dead so this one is here mostly for the minus three it's a it's a removal spell for minus three but if it does happen to uh resolve and we get the minus three off it's only going to be at one loyalty so um if you happen to keep it alive for the next turn then great you can start exiling some uh, or discarding some of your opponent's cards and some of yours because again you get stronger the more your battle your the more your graveyard is filled up your opponent most likely does not so you want to make sure that uh you want a minus three most of the time but plus one here isn't bad either and of course if you can get the ult ultimate of course that's going to be fantastic so liliana makes a whole lot of sense here plus it's a permanent so can be pulled back from the graveyard as well so a lot of synergy and finally this is kind of our secondary win con that you're going to see a little bit more of than you would the ultimatum just because the milling that happens in the meta right now plus all the discard effects that we have and uh, milling ourself effects that we have we're going to see pokernos we're going to see it a bunch of times it's a four of so we're going to see this card more than we're going to see this card so pokernos is a really good way of winning games bringing it back for a 12 12 creature and just fighting everything on the battlefield and winning the game that way so uh it's just another really great win con and if it comes back from the battlefield or the graveyard you know so be it it's it's fantastic but i really really want you guys to see the eerie ultimatum pop off um we play tested this like once or twice before we actually jumped into the gameplay footage it worked fantastically and i was able to pop an ultimatum for so much uh value we were able to pull back on uh, 90 percent of the board here so um area ultimatum is fantastic i love this deck a lot i think it's very unique and very very fun to play um i hope you guys enjoy this one uh we're gonna go ahead and jump into the gameplay footage though i know you might be curious about the land because we are running yori and we have a lot more lands than we typically would so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go over here i'm gonna scroll down just a little bit and you can kind of see the lands here it's kind of a lot to go through i won't actually individually go through each one it's pretty simple though two all the two of all the temples and then all of the you know dual lands all of the triumphs and then three locked lanes but if you need help with that uh there's a link in the description below it's not a link it's actually just a copy paste if you copy paste the deck list copy it import it into the magic arena this deck will populate right into your uh decks so that right there is the whole thing in a nutshell though thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching and i hope you enjoy the gameplay footage coming up and then we'll come back here at the end for some final thoughts talk about how it played and uh maybe some things we might change but uh till then we'll see you guys at the end peace all right here we go let me go ahead and start up the old music box here we go let's get some games in i'm actually really excited about this deck particularly because of this guy <clears throat> love this hand. Absolutely love it. We got two Meyer Triants to kick it off. Good old Doom Foretold. Trusty Doom Foretold here. Got two Triumphs already. Mana's not going to be an issue at all. Ooh, got a little removal here going. I'm going to go ahead and save the Triumph so we can get these out on curve. We might want to get this out on turn three, so I want to leave that option open if possible. Ooh, two lands. Two good lands, too. That's not good. We want interaction in our graveyard. Uh, we want interaction like creatures. We want things that are permanents that can be brought back. Because Eerie Ultimatum here is going to be our main, like, our main goal to achieve. And we want to bring back as many permanents as possible to just overwhelm our opponent. It looks like our opponent might be on, like, Demir Rogues, but I haven't seen a single Rogue yet, which is weird. If they are, we got some answers for it, so. 
Uh, but we are going to play another Mario Triton, so we're going to just go ahead and drop that. Maybe play another Trium or Temple here. Just trying to debate what I want to do. I don't think the Temple's worth playing, uh, just because they're probably going to mill us at some point. And if we scry, they're just going to mill our scry from the top of the library. Did we hit anything there other than lands? No, we didn't. Sweet. Doom foretold. Not very good here. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to place this in our hand. Drop this down and swing in for two. Until our opponent does anything, we're just going to... We're going to do what they do. We're going to just kind of have a staring contest here. Let the staring contest begin. We'll take the two damage every time, though, until they want to do something about it. Ooh, okay. That's something. There's the rogues, though. We were waiting for those. We were waiting. Eerie ultimatum got a little better. There we got a ton of lands we can bring back. And then uh, a couple things here, but... I don't mind losing a Doom Foretold now, though, because... Uh, you know, we can bring it back, but I think Elspeth's Nightmare is the obvious choice here. We uh, might get drowned in the locked here. Could very well be a play that they do. There it is. And I'm okay with that. If I'm being completely honest, I'm a okay with it. We got to be careful with the scry because we're going to be milled. Uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, if you think about it, because if they put in a Skyclave Apparition into the graveyard, uh, we get it back with the Eerie Ultimatum, so... I'm gonna keep... keep that on top. Cling to dust, okay. They... went for their own graveyard? That seems kinda odd, they could've... sacrificed some of my graveyard, but... Okay. They're really not doing anything yet, though. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot. See what happens. We should start deciding whether or not we want white or green. I think we want white, if I'm being completely honest. And then I'm not going to swing in because I don't want to run into a uh, Death Touch Guild Enforcer. So we got white, white, black, 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 green. We need one more. We need one more of any color, and I think we got it. That's a problem. That Slither Wisp is actually a huge, huge problem. One more of any color brings back everything, but um Oh, I am taking that 100% of the time. Oh, I see what they're doing. Okay. Well played. Well played. I can respect it. What they hit? Another Timurets? I don't really want to play the ultimatum if we hit a land here, just because I don't want to be countered. Could easily get countered here. But I feel like that's really our only choice because if we play Doom Foretold, all that's going to happen. I mean, we could go double Doom Foretold maybe? No. No, we can't. Doom Foretold is just going to get rid of this and then we're going to lose it the very next turn. So there seems to be no point to playing that if I'm being completely honest. So what's going to happen here is we're going to try to ultimate him and see if we don't get countered. Really hope not. I really hope not. No drown in the lock. Come on. We had we had to play it. Oh, let's go. We hit it. Unreal. I'm so happy. We might actually win this game. We might actually win this game. Let's freaking go, man. Let's freaking go. I cannot believe it. I thought we were getting countered all day long. It was really our only option though. We had to we had to go balls to the wall. We had to. Had to do it.
They're definitely in no danger of milling us. We're not even close. And then we have a lot more options here as well. We can also Yorian and blink some things here. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of another Call's Dead. Get a zombie. Ooh, that's going to be milled. I'd rather not have that milled. Dang, we don't have any black mana. We have just enough to to play uh, Doom Foretold, but didn't give us any black mana. I don't think we actually even got to choose which side of the uh, dual-sided land we got to play out of the graveyard there. That's unfortunate. Uh, 100%. They're going to flash in something to uh, make this a zero. So let me go and do this. Yep, there it is. You fool me once. Shame on you, you know? You know that old saying? Oh, there we go. Got a Polkronos out of the graveyard. That's what I'm talking about, dude. All right, we're, we're going to definitely be taking control of this game here now. Oh, they bounced a token, though. Savage. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Show me that hand. Show me the hand. Okay, that's fine. Drown in the locker into the story. Oh man. That stinks. Timurit calls the dead. Only 39 cards in the bin now. It's getting a little scary. Um, let's go ahead and play the Polkernos now before it gets countered. I think that's our biggest... Biggest thing we need to get down. Let's do that. Get this down. Uh, we could Doom Foretold. What does that leave us with? That leaves us with... No mana to fight with, so we can only get down a Skyclave and fight. Okay, so Skyclave. Let's take you, because it's a flyer. Let's kill you. And we're looking really sharp now. Looking really sharp. Gonna exile our opponent's graveyard so that clean to dust is gone. Loving it. Loving it. I'm fine with that. No cling to dust for you. I'm just going to replay it. Okay. Interesting choice. Um, you know what? I'm going to allow that. We have plenty of health. I'm not in any danger of losing the game to my health. Uh, another Pokernose could be good, but I got one in the graveyard. I think we're more, we're more worried about playing that one. Opponents down to just one brazen bar. We're, we're feeling really strong about this. All right. Definitely going to play Pokernos again. Uh, into a Charming Prince. Da, 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 da. Oops. This one. And this one. And this one. All right. Pokernos comes down. We take out the flyer, of course. That leaves us with just enough mana to play our Charming Prince. Um, Charming Prince, we could scry if we wanted to, uh, but I think I'm going to gain three life. Uh, yeah, we could swing in. I have no no fears here in swinging in. We have 38 cards left in the deck, so we're not, uh, not in the best of shape there, but they've only got a Brazen Borrower, so I'm not really concerned about the outcome right now as far as the milling goes. All right, they got two creatures big enough to test me with the swing in. More millage. Ugh, so unfortunate. We haven't had to play any Doom Foretold yet. This is kind of crazy. 
GG's. They scoop it up. They don't want to finish this game out, man. I really wanted to play a couple uh, Doom Foretolds there. Maybe we pop down two, take care of those, fight these two, and then the board would have been completely ours. We would have been able to swing in for, you know, countless damage. And then if we did end up losing the Poker Nose, we just keep bringing it back. So, G friggin' G's. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, what do we got? Starting off with some really good mana, like that. Charming Prince is always good to scry into. We got the Binding of Titans this game. That should be interesting. Let's give it a shot. I like it. I like it. One of these is going to have to be white. Uh, I'm going to throw down the Swamp first, though, just in case we draw into, like, maybe another Plains or a Forest. Kind of doubtful, but you never know. Got to be careful with that. Good opening hand, though. Got a lot of low drops. A lot of things that uh, we get some cards into our bin. We got some removal. Pretty happy with this. Okay, they're trying to fling some stuff. That's not good. Um, I'd rather play the binding first, I think. Get that going. See what we get our opponent to mill so we can kind of get a better idea of what they're running. Yep, some fling action here. Okay, so they're trying to gain control of my permanence and fling them at me. That's not the end of the world, I think. Not the end of the world. Uh, what do we want to get rid of here? Probably the greed and the champion. I'm glad we hit a champion because they had a champion in hand, so... Let's go ahead and go with uh, white. And go here, take care of the champion. Got some sagas going now, some endless sagas. A lot of, lot of value there. If you can get a multiple sagas on the battlefield, you're just getting endless value for doing nothing. They're just passive, passive income, essentially. And then we have a giant killer. We gotta make sure we, we're prepared for this giant killer to use it properly. Uh, okay, which one do we want? Do we want double white, yeah? Um... Fire Prophecy could be bad. As long as I can't take my stuff, these are kind of irrelevant, right? Fire Prophecy. Uh, yeah, let's just go on Skyclave. Skyclave the giant. Feeling really good right now. We've got a really strong start happening here. Um, the land is making me a little nervous. I'd like to keep flowing into some land just so we have it. Uh, I didn't want to play the Awakening as land, but it looks like we're going to have to. Got to stay on my curve as far as dropping lands, because if we find our ultimatum, we uh, we want to be able to play it. So, All right, well, this can't block. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off this, uh, th this play by swinging in. Uh, we could go Liliana here. I wouldn't mind... Yes, let's play Liliana. They don't have anything in hand that uh, initially threatens a Liliana, so let's go ahead and play it. Start having some fun with this. I mostly wanted Liliana for the minus three ability. Interesting play there. I didn't, I honestly did not expect that play. Okay. Why didn't I expect that play? Oh man. Oh well, that's fine. We lose Liliana, not the end of the world. Man, I really forgot, I really forgot they could fling right there. Jeez. All right. Doom Foretold's gonna be good here, I think. Uh, Doom Foretold with Hopefully a Charming Prince, if we get the mana for it. If not, we'll go Giant Killer. Or oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And we get Charming Prince, so I think that's the play. We'll take you. If they don't play the Kazool's Fury here, uh, they're going to lose it, so... Up to our opponent here on what they want to do there. Um, I'd rather have some land or... Yeah, I need something better than those. Something better. Annex, okay. Okay. 
I don't mind taking the three for now. It's not not the best, but all right, they lose their fury. We do hit a land. Beautiful. Uh, Doom Foretold is solid here. Maybe. Actually, if we play that, no, we still don't have to do it. Hmm. Yeah, Doom Foretold, I think, is going to be the play here. Get rid of that Annex. Yeah, I think that's all we can do right now. And then... Do we play the giant as a creature? Or do we wait? Maybe we wait. No attacks. It just kind of sucks because I don't want to lose my Charming Prince to a chump block, but it might be what we have to do. Okay, now we're good. We should be fine. We'll let the three go through because we can gain another another three life when we uh, replay this. We don't care about exiling our opponent's graveyard. Three. And we'll do Binding Titans. Gain a little bit of life off of that. Beautiful. We find a Polkronos. And do we play this now? Yeah, that's to block the 1-1. One, one. No attacks. Actually, I have a better idea. We're going to double block the 3-3 three, three and then the 1-1. One, one. got a pathway here that's good oh they stomp our charming prince i was really hoping to use that gain a little bit more life here all right well we'll definitely do this though if they were wise they yeah they'd kill a giant killer smart okay i'm definitely gonna take you and you sure gain some life and then polkronos can come down and be the big body we need uh, let's see, I need doubles. Elspeth's Nightmare is a double. Charming Prince is a double. And then we can get rid of this. Doom Foretold's gonna be a double. Sure. Uh, we'll go white. No attacks. Now we got Polkronos down, baby. Now we can just start fighting everything. Double fight next turn. Wow, they're really hoping to grab something there. Okay, well, that's six cards in the bin. That could kill... It can't, ki can't kill Polkronos. They're definitely going to plus it. I would, I would assume they're going to plus it because if they plus it, then uh, we, we discard a card. They don't, so... All right. Um, ooh, we can Skyclay the Liliana, can't we? Kind of like the Lockthwain too as an option for card draw, though. Can I kill Liliana here? I fight this. We kill it for three. That makes me a seven. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So let's just take the Lockthwain. I want to be able to go late game and draw cards because I feel like we're going to run out of gas here pretty soon. Oh, we don't have the right mana. Oh, we don't have any green. Oh, we didn't have any green. That's lame. All right, well, it is what it is. Oh, they can't block. Oh, what am I thinking? I thought for whatever reason they could block. That was a misplay. It was like a really minor, minor misplay, but a misplay nonetheless. All right, let's go with... Just swinging in face. And the forest. And maybe a Myers trying to say go. Ooh, another Pokernos. Let's go. That's a 12 Pokernos, by the way, if we uh decide we don't want this anymore. Oh well, that works. We'll get the W either way. So so far, reanimators doing really, really well. We got two really solid games there uh, to start off the, the deck. So very happy so far. Let's keep it rolling, man. Let's see if we can't get this to Muthuk. All right, so far, our video is going extremely well. I, uh, I knew this deck would be strong. I did. I knew it was going to be really strong. But again, anytime I make my own, like, jank version of something, I'm always worried that there's that, that, 
that chance it's not going to work out. And a lot of videos that don't ever make it to YouTube are those examples. But you'll never know about those ones. All right, keeping this. This is like gas right here, man. This is some gas right here. We need to get some uh, ability to get things to the graveyard, though, so that way our Liliana can minus three on something. I'll say it's bounty. Okay. Starting it off hot, huh? Starting off hot. Gonna have some creatures hitting the field here pretty quickly. Are we in a life gain deck? Looks like we might be. We sure are. That's my target for apparition. But strong, strong possibility our opponent's gonna be able to protect it with uh, the Alsade. I feel pretty good about this though. This matchup does not necessarily scare me. But you never know. They might hit us with like a speaker of the heavens. That could be a problem because we have no way to deal with the flyers. So we got to be on our toes here. All right, they're not going to protect their priest. That's good. They need that mana open to protect the priest. So it's as good as ours. Oh, that's huge. What a find, dude. In this matchup, that's a huge find. So now I have no problems or any qualms by blocking the uh, Linden with our Skyclave Apparition because if we block there, we're going to drop a Shadow of the Sky anyway, so. So honestly, it's even better to just make this block happen. That way they get their little 2-2 and that way we can clear the whole battlefield. If we Shadow the Sky, I think we just win. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. Have your 2 2. That's fine. They draw a card, which is a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. They're going to try to give protection for Linden for white, but it's not going to work. Linden's still going to die. Worth a shot. Even when I know it's not going to work, I still do that stuff too. You never know. You might bug the game out. <laughs> You might bug the game and get lucky. Skyclave Apparition coming down. Take that Linden off your hands if you don't mind. It wouldn't have been a bad idea to take the um, the Heliod either though. But I feel like we should take the Linden. That way we just take away any sort of damage that they can do on us. Shadow Spear, okay. I think it's time to drop down a Doom Foretold to get rid of those pesky little enchantments and artifacts above. Myers Triton. Pretty good. Pretty good. Get some cards in the bin for Liliana. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna Liliana right now instead of Doom. Yeah, I like Liliana a little better here. Get some cards out of their hand. I have a bad feeling their hand is full of lands though for them not to play anything on a turn you know a three mana turn kind of weird hell yeah that actually makes a lot of sense okay i really didn't expect that card so that's kind of good that's kind of good How do I play this next turn? This next turn should be pretty interesting because I'm I'm drawing with Myers Triant. Doom foretold this. Doom foretold might have to go. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Can I play one, two, three, four? I need another mana to play both of these. I should have scribed for mana there if I would have known this was going to happen. But I couldn't have expected the swift response. Like, it's not a card you see every day in a white deck. Not a card you see every day. Now they've got trample. <sighs> I 
I guess we go Doom Foretold, then we go Meyer Triton just to block that uh, token. Keep plusing one on Liliana. Heliod's probably gonna go here. More than likely, they want to they want to keep that Shadow Spear so they can kill Liliana, which is fine because they're gonna run through uh, Myers Triton, which is gonna kill their token. But then it does get rid of Doom Foretold, so that's something. I mean, it's something. I'm gonna need to draw something big here. I've really kind of really kind of gone dead now. My deck's gas kind of ran out. I hope they take the Shadow Spear off. Oh, thank goodness. That actually helps us the most, I think. I really do. Because that allows our Doom Foretold to actually have one or one or the other to sacrifice this turn. Because this either means they're not going to swing in because they get no value out of it because Meyer Triton is going to kill it. There's no trample effect, so they're definitely not swinging in. Okay, take don't take doom if they don't take doom. Oh beautiful. They're looking at Liliana Looking at Liliana right now if they don't take doom foretold we can get Liliana right back because they're gonna have to sacrifice it oh, Okay, they do they see it. They see it If they would have taken Liliana there I could have just sacrificed my Myers Triton next turn and they would have had to sacrifice something else Well, that is a sight for sore eyes right there That is absolutely a sight for sore eyes. Um, I'll swing in just in case they have a speaker of the heavens. I don't want them to be able to play it and start uh, pumping out angels because they're at 28 health. And if they need to, they need to be at 27 for that to happen. So going to swing in, get that two points of damage down. That's not good. Oh, let's go. They took Liliana. Savage, dude. I am okay with these plays. What are they doing? Polkronos would have been the one to take there because it has reoccurrence from the graveyard. What are they thinking? Uh, yep. Draw. Oh, beautiful card. What a phenomenal card. Looking really, really strong right now. Liliana uh, is not that hard to get to the ultimate either. So if we get to uh, Lili uh, Liliana ultimate, it's going to be really, really good. Okay. Just wasted my breath, apparently. You only think you've won. We found it. We found it. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're one mana short to play it. And I'm sure we have all the right colors. Uh, oh, no. We need a black source. Oh, okay. I think that was kind of a no-brainer on the play I just made there. I'm not sure. I mean, we did have an option where we could, uh, you know, Yori in there, re-blink my apparition, giving them a 3-3 token, and stealing something up here, maybe even getting our Doom Foretold back. But I think getting a 4-4 out of that and them not being able to do much, I think is a really solid play. There you go. Got ourselves a Doom. We're good. Swinging in for a lot of damage. I think this is pretty much foregone, uh, foregone conclusion. And they're going to have to either give us another Doom Foretold back or they're going to have to take the Heliod off the board. So their choice, not an easy one. Not an easy choice at all. There's really honestly no way they can win. I, I'm pretty sure at this point. So this is all just semantics at this point. I hope you guys are enjoying this deck though, man. I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. I feel like it's uh, pretty powerful if I do say so. Um, the ultimatum too, man. If we can actually get a really big ultimatum off, like it's, it, this deck is going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. 
Plus, we got a poker note sitting in the bin where we can actually play it because we only need to exile six cards to play it. So, eight cards in the bin. Myers Tritant. Uh, either one doesn't matter. All right, we got the giant killer. Interesting. Let's just go ahead and play poker notes for the crazy big creature it's gonna be. We have six damage sitting on the field, so we get our opponent down to one. Opponent's down to one. We got a poker nose that can fight any sort of creature that they want to play. And then, uh, you know, we're doom foretolding their Heliod here. So if they have Banishing Light to take poker nose, so be it. Uh, you know, we still got six points of damage on the field. So I think it's a GG's. We might see our opponent's head explode here. Exploding head. Oh, they're going to let us play it out. That's nice. And GG's. We did it. We did it, guys. That's 3-0 and with this deck already. And uh, what are we, 30 minutes in? Uh, we might be able to squeeze in one more. This could be a long video, though. Um, we'll see. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day out there. If you're watching this video right now and you hear my voice, thank you so much for sticking around and, and enjoying this gameplay footage. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun playing this one this week, uh, this Monday's deck. And uh, I hope you guys are enjoying watching because this is definitely one of my new favorite decks that we've made so far. I think we've got a pretty solid hand here. Anytime we can get the blessing with the foretold, it's pretty solid. I love seeing mono red because we got a shadow of the sky here. Can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with the old Shadow of the Sky. Skyclave Apparition, that's good too. We'll go white for now. I hate having to make a decision on our dual colored lands early in the game like this. Uh, this one's definitely should be green, I would, I would say. Um, opponent hasn't played any more creatures yet, so I'm gonna just go ahead and drop the Elspeth's Nightmare here and say go. Um, I was really expecting them to have played at least two more creatures by now, being mono red. They must be sitting on like six Tor brands or something. There's one of them. There's one of them. Oh my god. <laughs> who, ke who keeps a hand like that? Uh, to each their own, I guess. To each their own. <sighs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, let's just drop this down as a tap land. Shock. Yep. We knew that was coming. Tour brand comes back as a token, which is fine. 4-4, um, four, four, not that big a deal. Pokernos will take care of that. I'm trying to think of the best way to deal with it. Pokernos seems like the best option. I mean, we could just shatter the sky. That way we ensure that our opponent doesn't get another Embercleave or any Embercleave down. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and Ember or let's go ahead and shatter the sky. I don't want to see an Embercleave this game. Uh, I just didn't want him to be able to draw a card, but not the end of the world. Okay. That's a Doom Foretold target. Ooh, Eerie Ultimatum. Okay, sweet. Sweet. <sighs> yeah. I just have a bad feeling they're going to remove this off the battlefield. That's why I kind of hesitated there. I'm like, do I want to give him back a 1-1 or do I want to give him back a 3-3? Yep, there it is. Giving him back a 3-3. I knew it was going to happen. You know, sometimes you just have a feeling. When you know, you know. You know? Uh, Green. Black, 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 white, white, green, green. I can actually pull this off now, but I don't have... A whole lot in the graveyard. Let's not eerie ultimatum yet. Not that important. Let's just doom foretold. And what do you think? Scry? Yeah, scry. Another temple of Malade. No, thank you. I could have played uh, Fastland and then just got this into my hand, but 
Yorian is just uh, it's just there so we can basically run 60 cards. It obviously has its benefits uh, that we can bounce, you know, Treacherous Blessing and stuff, but for the most part, it's just kind of there, so no rush on that. Uh, we could play the Poker Nose and fight something right out of the right off the rip, so I'm going to play it and fight the token, and that way the Doom Foretold has targets to hit. I mean, I guess I could just send it, huh? Let's just send it. Let's send it, bruh. Send it. Just send it, bro. Send it. We get a knight and we get some life, which kind of sucks. Um, I didn't actually do the math on that. Now we're kind of stuck with Treacherous Blessing. <laughs> Whoops. I definitely didn't do the math on that properly. Not the end of the world, though. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll just block it. I could double block there, but they're going to obviously uh, kill the apparition and getting back at 3 3. Guess they're going to do it anyways. We might have lost this game because of my silly plays, but we should not have sent that. What? They scoop? I have a treacherous blessing out here. I mean, I guess I do have a handful of cards, but either way, we weren't exactly out of the woods there. I, I definitely shouldn't have eerie ultimatum there. I did it more so for the video. That was definitely for the video. Um, I should have poker notes there and just kind of slow played the situation because uh, we got our treacherous blessing back, which was awesome, but we lost our doom foretold. So we didn't actually think that one through all the way, but GG's nice quick game. That's definitely going to squeeze into the video. We'll see it. Well, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be wrapping it up now though with the final thoughts. Let's get into that. Peace. And that's the games. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video so much. I know I did. This is definitely a, a really strong, powerful deck that I think could be pretty competitive. So especially in better hands than me, I, I, I'm not going to argue that I don't make misplays. I absolutely make a ton of misplays all the time. So if there's a player out there much better than me that can play this deck a little bit better, by all means, I think you're going to be fantastically surprised how well it actually plays. Um, I'm winning pr games pretty easily with this, so I'm going to keep running this down the ladder and see what we could do for the next couple hours. It's Sunday. I have some free time, so I'm going to keep playing this and have some fun with it. So I personally don't think anything needs to be changed. Um, I'm sure there's options. I know that Charming Prince is probably not exactly the biggest synergistic card in the deck. It It's not exactly great for what we're trying to accomplish with like putting things in our own graveyard and reoccurring them back to the battlefield. And there's a lot of other cards that can bring cards back from the graveyard um, as well. I know once once in the future, I think it's what's called once, where's that? Yeah, once in future, this is a really cool card because you can actually pull back other cards from the graveyard that aren't necessarily creatures. I know the awakening pulls back creatures. Um, if you happen to not have an eerie ultimatum in hand and you discard it into the graveyard based on like a Myers Triton on accident or something, and you can't find one a once in the future is another really great card to pull back uh, an eerie ultimatum with. But I do think that's a lot of setup. Um, I think the least amount of setup, the better. Um, if you can't find eerie ultimatum, that's why we have poker notes as a backup. I just think that this deck works really well. Um, I don't personally want to touch it too much. If you guys at home think that you have some ideas or some cool uh, tips for me, definitely share them in the comments below. It only helps the algorithm. And plus, I'm always ear I'm all ears for like cool ideas on decks. And uh, I've definitely taken some of your ideas in the past and played with them a little bit in my own decks and uh, had some fun with it. So please, 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 I encourage you to like the video subscribe if you haven't already and you made it this far plus if you made it this far shout out to you because you guys are the real ones making it you know almost an hour into the video now and you're still here hanging out with me and listening to my voice which can be a little nasally and uh, annoying but i appreciate you sticking through it and uh helping me out as much as you have and all the support you give me every single day so I'm going to keep grinding, keep posting these videos, hopefully have another one ready for you to go on Wednesday. I think it's going to be Mardu Control, and uh, we'll see you guys then. Peace.